What is up my peeps, Joshua Smith here and welcome to the GSD Mode Podcast. So real quick, before we jump into today's epic, amazing podcast interview, make sure to check us out at gsdmode.com where you can see previous interviews as well as a bunch of other free resources that will help you massively grow your real estate business. Also, if you enjoy and find value and see value in the content here at GSD Mode, make sure that you share the show with somebody that you feel can benefit from the content that we are releasing. This show is possible because of all your support and your support truly means a lot. Now let's jump into today's interview and go have some fun. Peace. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast where every single week I interview top entrepreneurs, top real estate professionals, and just straight up top badasses out there dominating their space. These are people choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create big, amazing, epic lives for themselves, their families, as well as have a big impact on others, which is why they, they agree to give their valuable time to be here and share their brilliance with us. So today, you guys, got another rock star guest on the show, a guy I'm really excited to have here on the show. Our guest uh, today uh, formerly was a Fortune 100 company consultant and consulted and worked with companies uh, such as Sony and, and Exxon, uh, Procter & Gamble, um, and then decided to break off, break away from you know, an amazing career, amazing job that he had to go become a coach and a consultant on his own and coach other entrepreneurs and coaches, business owners, and really anybody that was looking to perform at, at their, their absolute peak. Um, and over time, built the world's largest coaching company, you know, right? Uh, uh, serving an audience of over 150,000 coaches globally. Um, this dude is the real deal. So really stoked and honored to have David Wood in the show. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you, Joshua. Happy to be here and excited to find out what's going to happen. Yeah, no, I love this, man. You know, I, before I got into real estate, uh, uh, I, I came from the, the health club industry. And I had a lot of time in there as, as a personal trainer. And, and you know, it, it's like, it, it, and I think of this where my mindset always goes, you know, right? Like a lot of real estate agents think of themselves as a, as a realtor. Where to me, it's always like, look, I'm just, I'm just here to coach and serve and support as a coach or a consultant to my clients to help them accomplish their goals. I'm really just a guide to the process. And it, then it kind of changes that lens, you know, right? So I'm really excited to go deep into how you become so successful as a coach. I think there's a lot of ways that we can connect the dots for us to be able to, any entrepreneur that's listening to this, on how to coach their clients through their journey as well. Um, but before we get into all the things that you're doing today, man, I'm always intrigued in our guest journeys that led them to where they're at. Like if you rewind the clocks, what led you into consulting in the first place? And then, like, man, you had an epic job. Like most people don't have the guts or the desire to, to leave that, that, you know, golden ticket. I'm really curious to like what led to that journey? Like what was happening internally in that process? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you how it happened. And also I want to make the point. Um, sure. I hope our, our listeners get some ideas maybe on how to coach their clients and customers, but also um, I'm sure you know this, our mindset is so critical to our success. You've got a lot of real estate agents listen to this. And if you just try and get all the business stuff right, you'll get to a certain level. But if you can hack your mindset, um, you can go so much further. So I'm hoping people will not just get some tips they can use with clients, but what can they use in their own life and their own business today that's going to have them be more successful? Yeah. Uh, so how it happened for me is I, was, I thought I was fairly happy as a consulting actuary on Park Avenue in New York. I'm, I'm seeing some really big clients helping them in a broad sense with risk management. And someone suggested I go to a personal growth course. In fact, they suggested my wife go because I was complaining about my wife. I wasn't happy in, in my marriage. They said, your wife should go to this course so she can change. And I was like, that sounds great. I want my wife to change. But the more I heard about this course, the more I thought I could use this. I could use a wake up. I could use like to learn what I don't know, I don't know. So I went and even though they uh, were smiling too much and they had name tags and I thought this is very culty, I'm gonna get in and get out and never go back again. I'll just do one course because I don't wanna be a self-help junkie. Well, you know, famous last words, I got hooked. They actually cracked me open. I found myself coaching people in the course. I couldn't help myself. 
when they got stuck, I'd say, well, the teacher said this yesterday, and have you tried this? And what if you were more courageous? What would that look like? And people were having breakthroughs from what I was saying to them. And I thought, I want, I want more of this. So I ended up quitting my job on Park Avenue, going back to Australia, had a slight divergence as an entertainer, playing guitar and singing in pubs and parties and even on national TV, but found my way into coaching as a career. And I just find I'm happiest when I'm coaching and training. I get inspired to help someone unlock a, a pathway that they hadn't seen. So last 20 years, this is what I've been doing. Yeah, love it, man. So when you went to that, that uh, um, the, the event, the, the self-help event, um, was that more of a thing that you were just looking to expand yourself personally and just to, to enjoy life more? Or was it also, did you think that you'd be able to grasp things there that you could bring back to your coaching clients or your consultants? Well, I didn't, I didn't have any coaching clients at that stage. So it was nothing about coaching. It was just for me. I had a sense, I didn't know exactly what I'd get, but I had a sense that I needed some kind of shift. So I went in there on faith. Now, when I got in there, I found that I loved coaching. So I went and did a couple more courses because I found out they would train me as a coach if I did a couple more courses. And I thought, I want, like, what's, what's that about? So then I got trained as a coach and I got, got hooked on that. Yeah. And, and I love that you, you talked about the mindset thing because, it, man, it's so true. Like we can, you know, we can, we bring on a lot of, let's just say, top producing real estate agents that will share tactical scripts and, you know, different things. And, and, and I've been in a lot of different, different spaces and niches. I, I've got several other companies that are outside of real estate and inside real estate more than any other industry that I've seen, you know, there's more information available and even free information for real estate agents than any other industry. But we also have the least performing, you know, uh, 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 industry. You know, if you look at the gap from, you know, people that make money to, to that are broke, the gap is, is just massive, you know, right? Like 90% yeah. of the industry would make more working at McDonald's full time. Um, you know, uh, uh, so with that is, is kind of, you said before of, of, because we see all the training and coaching available is tactical scripts and different things that you can do inside your business, which only gets you so far, you know, right? There's, there's very little exposure and training when it comes to these mental blocks. And, and, you know, I can't agree more that like, you know, you control this, you control the world. 99% of it, it all starts with, with that mindset shift. So, what do you feel with, with in your own experience as you're becoming a coach, um, as well as with your coaching clients, you know, right? Um, like, why don't people do what they know they should be doing to create the life that they know they want and deserve, but they're just not taking action? Like, what do you, what do you feel the place is to start in the root cause of, of that mental block? Yeah, I think what's happening is that we're creatures of habit. We're animals. We're really, you know, we're literally animals and um, we're intelligent animals. But I take the viewpoint that we're all rats in a maze. We we get up, we go about our patterns. We've got all these assumptions about the world that we haven't challenged because we don't even know that they're there, and that's fine. And I think it's okay to be a rat in a maze. I hope that you love your maze and you're appreciating it and enjoying it. But the difference between us and other animals is we can stop, step outside a little bit, maybe with the help of a coach or a personal development on a course or a podcast like this, step outside a bit and look at the maze and say, wait a minute, is this the best use of my life and work? When I'm on my deathbed, am I going to look back and say, I gave it everything? Or am I going to say, I wish I'd been more courageous in my career. I wish I'd been more courageous in my relationships. I wish I'd been more truthful, had more connection. So my job is to have people stop and ask that question now so that they don't wait 10, 20, 30 years till they're on their deathbed. They can wake up now and say, hey, what do I want to change now so that I get the most out of my life and work? Yeah, so when it comes to that, you know, because in, in the world that we live in, man, we're so distracted, you know, and with all these smartphones and, you know, it, it, people just don't take the time to, to stop, to reflect. And I get yep. it. And, and unless something tragic happens in their, their life or something where it kind of forces it, that it shakes up their world and forces them to reflect. Um, um, now, I'm curious though with you before we get into kind of your, your, your feedback on how to effectively do that for them. Um, um, like, did you have a, a point in your life that kind of caused you to reflect right? or was it just going to that, that course that you went through um, or was there something else that, that 
kind of even before that maybe led to this or that really kind of just woke you up if you will instead of just sleepwalking the rat in the maze you know right um did you have a right I have a turning point right what well, was one of those waking moments well uh, for a little bit of context i didn't realize for most of my life that that uh some early childhood trauma had impacted my life i didn't know it i wasn't aware of it it's one of those things like i'm in the maze I can't see outside of it. You don't know what you don't know. When I was seven years old, I had a tragedy in my family. My, my little sister was killed in a traffic accident and I saw it. I was there and witnessed it happen at the age of seven. I didn't realize that I'd learned to shut down my emotions and just went intellectual, just got left brained, great at systems, great at producing results, but I didn't know how to connect with people. And then in that personal development course over a period of two or three days and then the second course i did i started to realize that i'd been cut off from the world and i was a bit of a cardboard cutout i didn't even know so um that was that was an aha for me and then when i coached someone else and i spoke to a woman who whose husband had an affair 10 years earlier and she'd been using that to control him for 10 years Makes sense, right? She kept him under the thumb using that as leverage that he betrayed her. But the thing she hadn't shared with him is that someone else had an affair 10 years earlier. She did. But she didn't tell him that bit. And in our conversation, she saw the possibility of laying her marriage on the line, risking her marriage to come clean, share the truth so they could be on an even playing field and he could choose if he wanted to go forward. And she came back and reported to me that they felt like they were both floating on air six feet above the ground for the whole weekend in love from her taking a risk. And that was another aha moment. Like, wow, look at what's possible when we step into our courage. I want that for my own life and I want that for everybody else. Yeah. Love it, man. Love it. So then, um, where, where is the place to start if somebody's listening to this? You know, because I mean, it, we get so damn busy in life, you know, right? When, yeah. you, when you're, especially when you have a, a service based business where you have a lot of clients, you know, right? And then you still have, you know, maybe your spouse and your kids and your family. And dude, it's just, right. you know, the second the alarm goes off and then 10 o'clock at night, your eyes, you pass out from exhaustion, repeat tomorrow. And, you know, right? Um, so people hear, because, you know, we'll hear things like this. And anybody that's working on self-development will hear stuff like this. But where uh, do you start? Yeah, but yeah, what, like, what, what are the tactical steps of, okay, like, here's an exercise to start where you can make sure, or, right? Because, like, why are we working? We're, we want to build a business that allows us to live a life worth living. And, and just to share, you know, a little bit of context with you on this. Um, so in my early 20s, I worked as a nurse's aide on, at a hospital on the hospice floor. Um, and my job was just as a nurse's aide to hang out with the patients, make them comfortable, you know, right. And just spend that time with them. And, and over that time, and I would never kept count, but hundreds, if not thousands of patients, not one of them was like, man, life was amazing. Life was epic. I'm ready for the next journey. Right. All of them had this should have, would have, could have list. And I don't know if it was cause I was young or I'm not a family member. They were very honest with me and you could see the pain in their eyes of wish I would have done vacation more, went to these spots, been a better husband, yes. father, what, like, do they all at that Regret. point, like, you talked about their deathbed, they all had massive pain and wish they could do it over again, right? Which yes. the goal is to not, like, to ha not have that pain at the end. Yeah, right? we want to save you from that pain. Yeah, so, so how can you make sure that right now your, your compass is pointed in the right direction? Great, okay. So the first thing, and by the way, I've done over 100 interviews and I've never said this before. It just came to me now, so I'm going to share it. First thing, you take a piece of paper and a pen, and right at the top of the piece of paper, what could be better? Simple, powerful question. What could be better? And then go through the areas of your life. Look at your health, your well-being, your stress levels, and just write down what could be better. Look at your relationships, your kids, your, your friends, your family, your partner, or lack of a partner, and write what could be better. Look at your job your business and write down like, like say a year from now or two years from now, what could be better? How could it look? This is the dreaming, the creation phase. And then I'll give you a, I'll share a simple four, four step process. It's not always easy to follow and most humans don't follow all four steps, 
but it's not complicated. It's very simple. Number one, do you have real goals? Written down, inspiring, motivating. And that piece of paper is going to help you with that to work out what could be better. So you want real goals. The second step, do you have a real plan? You might know what you want, but have you chunked it down into what needs to happen between now and then? What needs to happen each month, each week? What are you going to do today? A real plan. And then three, and this is where most people fall down, implement the damn plan. You might know your goals, you might have a real plan, but are you actually focusing each day on what you said was most important? I'm going to triple my business by the end of the year. All right. Are you doing the two most important things that day? Or are you screwing around with Facebook, Twitter? Are you getting text messages that are interrupting you? It's like people are so reactive in this day and age. They're not leading themselves. So real action. And then the fourth one is, is kind of what we, what we hinted at. Are you committed to real growth in your life? And uh, the three pillars I talk about when I talk about playing for real in life are truth, daring, and caring. Are you actively increasing your levels of truth, your levels of daring, and your levels of caring in your life? And the, the simplest ways I know to make sure that you're growing is to have a coach or go and do a course. Those are the simplest ways to, to kind of put in, because you're, again, I'm a rat in a maze too. We're all rats in a maze. You want to step out into a different maze, a bigger maze, knock down a couple of walls, alter it. It usually takes some outside energy. Now, podcasts can do it. Books can do it. But often we need that real life interaction to kick us in the butt and to confront us because otherwise we can just keep going around the maze a little faster. Yeah, so I love it. Four, four steps, real goals, real plan, real action, Real growth. Love it. Love it. And those that are watching, listening, I've, I've been taking notes on this. So I'll have those blow in the show notes um, for those four plans with notes on these so you can re-reference those. Um, on number four, I'm curious, um, when you say truth, daring, and caring, can you give an example of each? You know, right? Like I'm assuming truth is the story that you shared with a, your client about getting honest with her husband about her affair. You know, right? Um, is that what you mean by, you know, truth? Would that be that yeah. example? And then, you know, daring and then caring. Like how do you, how do you know with that? Can you give them examples? On yeah, that? each of those are rich topics. With the, with the truth, I was taught. I wasn't taught to share what was going on in me. I wasn't taught to share, to, to even be aware of what's going on in me. I wasn't tracking my thoughts. I wasn't aware of body sensations. Um, so I didn't reveal my own experience to myself and I couldn't reveal it to somebody else. So we're just not taught that in school or, or for most of our parents. I've spent the last 20 years studying my own inner dialogue. Like what's my mind telling me? And then am I willing to dare to take a risk and share it with the person I'm with so that I can feel more connected? So as an example, this, yeah, that's a huge example. At the extreme, woman confessed. So a confession is one example. But it might be more mild. I led a course on the weekend. And at, and at some point during the course, I shared with the participants that this was an edge for me. It was an edge for me because I'm, I was fairly new to the topic that I was teaching. So I wasn't pretending to be a guru up here. Honestly, I, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm learning. I'm showing up to give you the best I, I can that gives us a chance to be more related, a chance for me to relax, not have to pretend. And I don't want anyone listening to this call to have to pretend that, that they've got it all together, that they're anything other than they are. And this is where increasing your levels of truth and authenticity can go a long way to a better life. And I say it translates to better business results. Your customers are going to trust you more. Your coworkers are going to trust you more. Your staff, because you're real. That's, that's the truth part. Yep. Yep. I, I like the look on your face right now. You seem yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I was just thinking about a real life example of me. It was, 
you know, you, you get to a point where you're out in business and people have certain expectations. And, you know, I, I wasn't honest over the years. I, I wasn't lying to people, but I didn't also come forward about, right. you know, you know, the times of it, like, for example, I had a time in business um, about halfway through my business career uh, at this point where I lost everything, lost my life savings, put myself to $100,000 of business credit card debt. You know, right. Um, I didn't, I wasn't sharing that publicly, you know, right. Or the times where, man, I couldn't, I was short on paying off the IRS at the end of the year. And, and but man, I found, even though it was so scary, as soon as I decided to start sharing those things with people, um, not only did I just feel better personally, but man, the amount of uh, positive feedback and, and just connection with other people and the amount of lives that you're able to impact because of it becomes huge. Cause that, that vulnerable component, as you said, is so massive. You know, yes. And vulnerability yeah. is becoming more, uh, more of a thing in, in mainstream corporate life as well. Um, we want leaders who are willing to be vulnerable. They're not going to collapse maybe and, you know, and collapse into tears and not be able to lead, but they're going to stay in their dignity and be able to reveal, Hey, you know what? I don't know what's next in this meeting. Let me hear ideas. Right? Like that might be the truth instead of pretending I know what we're going to do. And then just speaking for the sake of it. It's like, I don't know what's next. Who's got something. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. Love it. And yeah. then, you know, with, with all your experience in, in coaching, right. Um, because there, there's, and I, I'm one, I'm a self-development junkie and I, and I truly believe in, in, um, coaches, right. I mean, if you look at my PL statement, you know, PL is like 2018 last year, I yeah, invested over just a, just over a quarter million dollars in, in coaches, consultants, programs, and that is, isn't just all for me. That's also my leadership team. Um, but there's not right. hasn't been a point in probably my life where for over a decade where I haven't had at least one coach in one segment in my life. And huge, huge wow. Because even in our own businesses, no matter what level you get to, as you said, you're the rat in the maze. I always compare it to you're the quarterback on the field. You can see all the players. You're trying to see all the players on the field, but then boom, you get blindsided. Like you need the person in the skybox. That isn't emotionally attached. That can oh, that's good. All the players on the field, and but with okay. that, man, there's a lot of there, there's a lot of life changing great coaches. But man, is there a hell of a lot more? You know, I don't want to say bad coaches, but maybe bad for them. How do you know, or what advice would you give? Um, being a coach for so long, as well as coaching other coaches, for those that are looking for a coach, how do you identify the best coach for you? What a, I really like that question. I don't. I don't know if I've been asked that before. Um, firstly, you may not know until you've worked with the person for a while. So it's kind of like, what's going to give you the best shot at success? Um, if you resonate with what you hear from the coach, you know, watch their videos, listen to their articles, get a, um, do a session with them, and you get a, a strong sense that this person has, has some things that you would like. So it's not just their knowledge, but who they are in the world, what they're doing with their life, how they're being, they've already embodied some of where you want to go, then um, it's probably hard to lose in working with that person because you're going to end up heading in that direction. And if you don't get that sense, if you do that, that, that first call with them, I usually do a discovery session with anyone considering coaching. If you don't get a sense like I'm inspired and I think this person is going to add something that's been missing, then keep shopping. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And try them out. My, some coaches are going to have you commit to like six, 12 months. I don't know how anyone can really do that uh, when, when you're new to each other. So I, I just have my clients commit to a time frame, but they can stop after any month if it's not working for them. Um, so you know, the, the worst, the worst in that case is, is that you've done a month and it doesn't really work and you, you realize that and then you go and find somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. So how do you, um, when you're doing internal work, if, if again, when it comes to a lot of blocks from taking action, you know, right. Of really, you know, living out of congruency, you know, that they have their, their list of what could be better in their life. And they're like, man, here, here is the perfect day, the perfect life. Like, here's what I really want. Yeah. Right. And then their actions, daily actions might be out of congruency with it. Like maybe they're like, Hey man, I want to lose 40 pounds and be in great shape. But then last night they had a big bowl of ice cream, you know, right. Just as a simplistic example. Um, um, but you know, a lot of times there, there can be self-limiting beliefs or, or other just yeah. mental blocks in there. 
you know, do you have any kind of like a daily reflection process that you found effective or, or kind of recommendations where, uh, you know, people can identify those blocks so then they can start working at those, whether it is, Hey man, I got to improve my environment or whatever, but just so they can have yeah. the awareness of what that trigger block is. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so again, if you're working with a coach, this is going to come up because you're going to, you're going to have to report at the next session if you did what you said you were going to do. So it'll be addressed, but let's say you're not working with a coach. One simple mechanism that I like is you write down the night before, so set your alarms, write down the night before the two most important things that you're going to do the next day. That's step one. Step two is you have to do those two most important things before you touch anything else. Phone messages, email, even if you really want to get ninja about this, even before you speak to anyone, you block yourself off, get yourself in an office, rent a get a conference room, whatever, get away from people, do your two most important things. Now, if that's happening for seven days in a row, and then you can extend it to 30 days in a row, I suggest your life and your business is going to change. If it's not happening, then start looking for what's going on. What's derailing me. Now it's hard alone. It can be tricky with a coach, but it's hard alone to change your patterns, but it can be done. I also want to bring in here. Now might be a good time to bring back the daring, um, truth, daring and caring. I said, what could be better, right? So you've got a piece of paper with what could be better. Maybe on the back of that piece of paper or another piece of paper, you could look at if I was more daring, if I was fearless, what might I do? What would be an edge for me? Another question I ask my clients uh, they, to answer every week, if I was to dream bigger, what would that look like? And so what I want, where I'm heading with this, is I want us each to become more aware of where fear or discomfort is holding us back. And it doesn't mean you have to go and conquer all those fears. I'm not saying that. That's the next question. I'm just saying let's at least see where our limits are and where we're playing a bit small. Like maybe I, I didn't ask that woman out at that gathering that I went to last week because I wasn't really sure what she's going to say. Okay. Good to notice. Maybe I'm not asking that dream client for their business because I don't know what they say. Maybe I'm not asking that celebrity for an endorsement or to partner with me because I'm a bit nervous about it. Maybe I'm not sharing some secrets with my partner or my friends because I don't know, I don't know if they'll judge me. Like let's at least find out where those limits are. And then you might want to go and circle one or two and say, all right, that's my edge for this, this week or this month. I'm going to lean into that and see if I can push back, expand my comfort zone by going into discomfort. Yeah. I love it. Cause if, if like to relate to real estate, right. A lot of the, a lot of people are challenged with call reluctance. And a lot of that is because of the fear of rejection, where if you have the awareness of, well, you're not doing your calls because of that fear of rejection, right. Well, then the next week, if that's your, your dare challenge, right. Then your goal can be, to, to get as many no's as possible where before, you know, it was okay. I need to get X amount of yeses and you were afraid of the no. Now the no's are exciting you and you can, it's just that, you know, switch of a lens. Um, yeah. and, and over yeah. time that, yeah, I can see how that could be so powerful. Yeah. You know, it just occurred to me, uh, going back to the maze example, and I really like your quarterback example even better than the maze example, but going back to the maze, I think one of the things that keeps us in the maze is our avoidance of discomfort. We want comfort and I don't think that's wrong. It's just going to keep us on a certain path. Start to say, let me practice discomfort. Let me bring in discomfort. Let me make those five calls that will have me uncomfortable. That's a whole different ball game. And that's going to take you into different, that's going to expand the maze. That's going to have you going down into different paths. So that's, that's like a hack to how do I step out of the maze? Let me see where I'm uncomfortable and if I'm willing to step into that. Yeah, love it. So then when it comes to caring, um, can you elaborate on, on that? Is that showing like self-care or is it caring for other individuals? You know, like, I, can you yeah. just go a little bit deeper into that? Well, it's a really rich word because it can take us into a lot of, a lot of great territory. 
I found that um, I was kind of like the spiritual warrior. If I was scared of something, lean into it. I'm scared of heights, I paraglide the Himalayas solo. I'm scared of abandonment, let me explore open relationships and date a woman who's dating someone else. See like where, you know, like I just had this idea that I had no limitations. Well, you know what, Joshua, I was wrong. I have limitations, um, my body has limitations, and I found that if I didn't take care of my body and honor what I need, my body would whack me over the head with a ton of bricks. I went into depression, I went into anxiety, uh, way beyond burnout. And so what I learned is some humility. And I learned that I need to care for my body, I need to care for my relationships, although atrophy, and we need to care for our business and our job as well, take care of our systems, our employees, our customers, are our taxes handled? Like if you don't care for those things and you just wanna go for the sexier stuff of daring and sharing our truth and building the business and all of that, um, yeah, burnout's a real thing and I, I think we're gonna suffer. So I don't think it's a sexy topic, the caring thing, but I've, I now have learned to, it, it's important. Yeah, no, and I love it because you know when you hear the word caring, you know my my mind originally initially goes to you know service to others, you know, um, which is important. But yes. if we don't serve ourselves first, you know, right? Like right. you got like we're we're taught to oh well, being selfish is a bad thing. Well, if you're not sharing, you know, it's it's like let's just say it's the mom that sacrificed or the parents that sacrificed all their dreams, visions, and goals, even their health and whatever, to to pour into their kids and give their kids more but then they might grow up and, and become you know insecure or you know cautious adults themselves because kids mimic you know right um where where there's that element of selfish you know selfishness that must happen for you to show up as the best version of yourself yes yeah i agree so so what i've been talking about here is putting the oxygen mask on yourself first and i and a nice word that someone introduced me to was self-full so there's selfish, like I don't care about anyone else. And then there's self full, which I'm going to have attention on myself and put the oxygen mask on myself first. Now, let's suppose someone's done that and evolved to the point where they've got surplus in their life. Then I think caring out for something bigger than you is a wonderful evolution and a natural evolution. So you might, I've got a client right now whose main goal is to triple business profits so that 50% of every uh, dollar of profit goes to animal welfare shelters. She's gonna become the shelter's shelter. So that's her mission and I love that. I'm working with an environmental nonprofit now and I've just started for my, myself going into prisons and training the inmates in authentic relating skills, being more truthful, daring, and caring. So, but that, that took time to have that evolution. I had, had to make sure that I was taken care of first to the point that I felt enough surplus that we could expand the caring for something bigger. And I love that you took it there. That is the next step. Yep. Awesome, man. So then, you know, er, early on, you talked about your own kind of in, internal observation of your thoughts and where your mind's going. And, and again, man, I mean, most people will just, we operate so fast paced in this life. And especially now with all the devices and social media, like most people can't spend five minutes alone without electronics and just be with their own internal thoughts, you know? And, um, and it's hard, you know, it's hard to develop the, that muscle to be able to really deeply reflect on, on your own internal thoughts and have that internal awareness and, and I guess getting in tune with your own intuition, if you will. Um, how, how do you start that process? Like what, what are tips there and recommendations there? And what's some of the power that can come from, just having that awareness. Wow. I love, I really love that question and hearing that I'm, I re realize more about myself. I realize that um, I, I have done things in the past 20 years to cultivate that as a practice. So my mental awareness of what's happening might be higher than someone else's. I had, it hadn't even occurred to me. Um, but here are two things that helped me. One, I had a teacher who who encouraged us to share our inner dialogue. So when you ever, we noticed a thought that was in here that wasn't coming out to our mouth, uh, this was at a course for eight days and we do multiple courses uh, over five, five or 10 years. I got to practice and uh, then someone else would share with me their inner dialogue and I'm like, 
oh my God, I can't believe you just said that out loud, but that would give me permission to go deeper. So again, a course is one way to see where all that stuff that's going on that you don't even know about. And the other thing that can really, well, meditation, I meditate about once a day. And so my mind has plenty of room to, to roam and for me to watch what's happening. And then the third one, practice this, this it come, it's kind of similar to the first one, but dare to practice your truth telling. When you notice something that you're not revealing, maybe you say to someone, hey, I want to take a risk and say something I wouldn't normally say. Is that all right? And then share it, see what happens. And uh, you might blow it a few times. It might be awkward a few times, but the more I do it, the better I get at doing it. And I believe that my brain is getting trained that I want to hear what's going on. I want to know. I want to become aware. Oh, I said to someone on the weekend, um, a woman I was attracted to, I said, oh, I just noticed I'm really nervous right now. I did, wasn't even consciously aware. I was just kind of like trying to hold it together. But I'm just really nervous right now and I want this conversation to go really well. So I noticed it and then revealed it. Yeah, I love that, man. And, and, and I don't know where you stand in this, you know, especially with your experience of not just the success you've created yourself, but with all your clients over the years and all these other you know, coaches and, and better, bigger, you know, big influencers, if you will, that are, that are having impact in so many of their lives. But um, um, I recently started reading a book uh, uh, called The Power of Awareness by Neville Godard. Um, I don't know if you've, you've read it before, but he talks about, you know, for, for what's happening in here, you know, right? Um, uh, let's just say you want to triple your business, right? Um, in order for that to manifest in reality, you've got to truly be, you know, convicted internally and, and make it a reality in here before it's going to manifest into the physical, physical realm. Right. And, uh, um, you know, if you, let's just say you want to hit a level of, of revenue in your business, man, I want to be, I want to be netting a million dollars a year. Right. Um, but then when you're having that self-awareness, you know, right. Like I've got a few of these going on and I'm doing this in my reflection where I'm still catching myself having limiting beliefs that I'm not quite capable. I catch myself come up with reasons. Like if I say, Oh, I'm the greatest at this. Because if you, if you look at like, uh, you know, the greats out like Muhammad Ali, he truly believed he was the greatest. Yeah, before he was, he truly believed. There was no talking about it, but he was, he was sold, not just communicated to the world, but internally, he was so convicted on that. And, yeah. and, and, and you know, this book goes down to like getting to that point of conviction. Um, and, uh, um, but man, if you don't slow down and, and pause and have that awareness of those internal thoughts, you may not catch that that internal block might be you. You don't truly believe or are convicted that you're capable of that. And do you, yeah. Yeah. Do you follow in, in kind of an alignment with that of developing your conviction in here, knowing that it's, it's truly possible and that you're capable of that before the results will, will follow. I didn't think I did until you said this. It's not something that I, I teach or overtly coach on, but I realize hearing you say that, that, I believe my current business plan is inevitable. It might take 30 or 40 years, or it could take three years. I don't really know about the timing, but it just seems logical that if I keep on the strategy and given the results I've seen already, that it's going to happen. So I believe that and I'm not stressed about it. And I, I speak as if, as if that's going to happen. Um, but I wasn't consciously aware that that's what I was doing. Also, something I have caught myself doing, sometimes I'll be daydreaming and I'll catch myself doing an imaginary speech five years from now to an audience telling them how I did it all and, and how it turned out so successfully. I didn't read that in a book. I just find myself sometimes daydreaming about it. Uh, there's a coach, I've forgotten his name, um, who talks about things being inevitable. You've got to get to the, find a, a way to get, to seeing that it is inevitable for you to get there. And I'm not talking about faking it, although that I think that can work too, fake it until you make it, but really find a way to believe that this strategy is going to work. If you can't get there, maybe the strategy isn't the best one. Maybe you need a better strategy. Maybe you need more help. Maybe you need some more resources. Maybe you need some more success so that you can feel it in your bones. I don't, that's one of the things you could work on with a, with a coach 
Um, so you're not faking it, but you actually believe, yeah. Now, again, I don't go on blind faith, so I don't believe 100% this is going to happen. I'm open to I could be wrong. But I think the chances are so good um, based on logic that I'm fully committed to this. And if it doesn't work in a, in a year or two or five, I'll switch. I got no problem doing that. So I'm not into blind faith and affirmations, but let's find a logical way for you to actually believe that the path you're going to work, uh, that you're working on is at least like 80% likely to give you exactly what you want. So then on the, 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 the path to success and, and, life and business, right? Um, we, we, especially in the business world, right? Um, we end up failing exponentially more than we succeed. And what I mean by failure of, of not, our business doesn't collapse and got to close the doors. I'm talking about, you know, just daily small defeats, if you will, you know, yeah. uh, more so. And in those moments, yeah. it can be, it can be hard to, to, to stay committed to your vision of, of what you have. And, and sometimes, you know, like I've had it in business where, man, it's like, like you're getting gut punched every day for three months, four months. And, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's like when I got myself that hundred thousand lot, lost my life savings, got myself the hundred thousand dollars. Well, lots of life savings. I had to put myself into a hundred thousand dollars business and credit card debt. Cause it was the only thing I had left without my other assets getting taken and me closing down my business. Right. Um, and in that moment, you know, and it took 18 months to get out of that hell hole. You know, I felt it like a loser is, is a husband, is a father, is a, is a business owner, is a leader in my company, you know? Um, um, but you got to keep pushing through those moments. So during those tough defeat moments, how do you stay moving forward? Not lose sight of the vision, but not let yourself get defeated, even though you might be defeated in the moment. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know in this moment. Uh, what you're talking about is feels very real to me. And I love Seth Godin's book, The Dip, um, which speaks specifically to at the beginning of any new venture. There's going to be a dip where just sh shit is just not working. And that's kind of the point. It's hard to get into. That's why not everyone does it. But are the rewards worth it? Um, something he draws on is to ask yourself, well, firstly, you want to become aware that there's a dip and that this is going to feel hard. And then ask yourself, are the rewards worth it? Am I going to make it through this dip? If you're not, get out now. The only two wins are making it through the dip or not even beginning. The, the, the crazy thing is to get halfway through or three quarters away through the dip and then stop. So if you're aware that you're in a dip and you're likely to come out the other side, I think that, could, that would give me heart. And if, and if you can generate some small successes uh, in this podcasting, I've been doing, appearing on podcasts for six months now. And fortunately, within the first four months, I got one dream client came out of a podcast. That gave me enough impetus to keep going and to keep on uh, spending two and a half grand a month on my assistant who's reaching out to book podcasts, right? Now, fortunately, within another two months, another client came. I'm like, all right, that's enough sign that there's real potential here. And then when the third dream client came, I'm like, I feel like this is inevitable. Now, if I go through a further dip, I'm reinforced. I can, I can do it. But I won't say to be blind, right? You've got to have that perspective too to realize am i like if it's two years in and everyone's telling me this product sucks sometimes you need a new game so that's that's what the diff's about knowing when to get out and knowing when to push through yeah i'm wondering if that answered your question i said i didn't have anything and then it seemed like i might have had something yeah no i i no i love it i can totally resonate with everything that you said there you know and i've just Went through something similar where um, I, I, I exited la uh, uh, well, last year um, from five of my companies. Got to the point where I had 10 companies. I started seven of those in 2017. And um, um, now in those, my team was strategic partnerships. We did one thing. Um, but instead of taking them on as a client, we would just partner. And, uh, but it got to the point where I was way beyond a max capacity. You know, right? I didn't uh, uh, understand my own expectations. And it was a very humbling moment. But with that dip, I, now I was in the low point of the dip when I exited, but it was either 
we talked about the light of the tunnel or get out, you know, right. I mean, sometimes we go through those and it's tough, but uh, sometimes you got to know when to quit, you know? And, and, yeah. Um, and sometimes that light at the end of the tunnel is a train. Yep. But here's the cool <laughs> thing about it is, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, it, it lost, uh, if you look at it from a time, like a loss standpoint, you know, seven figure loss financially uh, uh, or more than seven, just over seven figures of a financial loss. Plus let's just say a year out of time from, business and creating other business, other opportunities. Right. But the, the, the bonus is whether it's good, bad, or ugly, man, that, that if, if people have the awareness and are open to it, that the teaching capability, you know, right. Like it, it, life is just a, the most brilliant teacher. And if you're a, a, you know, willing to go deep on those life lessons, right. Um, and, and operate, like, I don't look at those as losses. I'm like, man, what I've learned from those will allow me to be that much more powerful going forward. So then even those dips and low moments can become a win, you know, yeah. if you have the right perspective. Yeah. And I want to speak to also, like, we've talked about the dip when you're at the beginning of a venture, but what if you're just in the middle of it, you're not quite at the beginning, and sometimes you just go days and days without a win. I think it's about the law of large numbers. People, uh, I think, can look at your success or my success and say, well, you've just got something different. You've got some magic that you no. no. I've tried, I could try a thousand things that don't work. I, I, one day I should just go through and create a list of all the things I've put so much time, blood, sweat, and tears into that never went anywhere. And then occasionally I'll get one or two things that works really well. Like right now, podcast appearances, uh, there are a couple of speeches I gave that just went through the roof. But most of the things I do, like I called a hundred people maybe, Hundred people when I was get, building my coaching business back up, got one client. Demoralizing, really. Like, whoa, what? So, yeah, the people who make it, I think, are the ones who are willing to have some tenacity and perseverance to keep on going if they've established that this is still the best strategy for them. Yeah, yeah, love it. Yeah, I just you know going back to to real estate, you know, it's. Like we, we do a lot of Facebook ads, right? Um, and to be crushing it, I mean, killing it with Facebook ads, right? Like you get to two and a half percent conversion, like you're, you're, a, you're killing it. You're one of the best in the game. But that means, you know, right at that, that, um, you know, out of, out of, out of a hundred people, two are going to say yes, 98% are, you know, 98 out of the hundred are going to reject you. And that's still killing it, you know, right? So, um, you know, yeah, we have to have the awareness, track our numbers, you know, not get emotional with some of these decisions and right. It, man. So, you know, I'm, I'm really curious in, as you've been building this coaching business, I know this is kind of switching gears a little bit, but you know, with, with, uh, um, just with the internet and technology, the way that it is, you know, as real estate agents, you know, they really need to anymore. Like it used to be in marketing. It, you, you had a choice. Do you want to be rich or famous? Yeah, right. Um, you can exhaust all your money on billboards and TV and radio, um, things that cost a ton of money that are probably going to give a low ROI. Um, or you could spend it strategically. Maybe not everybody knows your name and your face, um, uh, but the ROI is going to be there. Well, now today with online, the way that it is, online marketing, you know, it's like you can be rich and famous and you should be at both and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, and becoming kind of that local influencer celebrity in, in your own you know, city or niche that you work in, um, which you've done in the coaching space. Now you've done it globally with a, a 150 plus thousand um, uh, followers in your audience that are plugged into your content, and your materials. Um, as, as your path to building that, like what did you do to build it? And what tips and advice would you give for other entrepreneurs that are trying to build that type of a following? Wow. Well, there are two answers. There's a historic answer because uh, I've been around for a while. And then there's what I'm doing now. So the historic answer is I started, uh, I started in, when uh, my keyword was a penny a click on AdWords, right? Life coaching was a penny a click. And that's, I, I was in before that came out. And um, I, I got into SEO when I was number one on Google for life coaching, which was a big deal um, at the time, be a bigger deal now. And I built, I built my, my business and my following that way using AdWords and using SEO. These days, the market's fully changed. I have not cracked Facebook ads yet and I wasn't enjoying it. So I decided to use speaking as a way to attract the right clients. Speaking is natural for me and I like it. And then someone 
Um, uh, actually, you might you might know Ezra Firestone if you mention Facebook ads. Yep, yep. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I'm, in, I'm in like three of his programs right now. Oh, right. Well, Ezra... Um, Ezra is an old friend of mine and, and his first job in internet marketing was working, working for me back in the day. And now, now um, the student has surpassed the teacher by a long way, right? The guy's amazing. So when he says to me, you should do podcasts, um, that, would, that would be a really great way to reach high performers. I just switched like almost overnight. I said, this is what I'm going to do. So now this is my method is being a guest expert on other people's podcasts and sharing what I'm passionate about so that the right people can hear me and go, Oh wait, there's something about this guy or what he's saying that I feel is going to pull me forward. And then they request a, a discovery session on my site and that's how I'm building my business now. Now what I love about this approach is that I'm not just getting the right clients, but I'm building my, my, my national and global footprint as well. Cause I was semi retired for a few years in Bali, surrounded by rice paddies, I had staff washing my scooter and like, you know, I had that life for a while and now I'm coming back. So I need to rebuild my brand in a new niche. And this is the way I'm doing it for now. What, why, uh, why did you come back? You know, cause it, it doesn't sound like you needed the money. Like you could have kept down that, that dream lifestyle for a lot of people, but something internally must've called you back. Like why, well, why jump back into the game? Well, I'm going to reveal here and I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest. Um, one, one reason was money. I think there were two things that called me back. One was the money and two was, I was not happy. I was kind of dying slowly in paradise. I wasn't engaged with the world. I need to be engaged. I need to be helping other people to be living a better life and feeling inspired to feel alive. So I didn't plan to change my life. Uh, the universe did that for me. I got, in tr I got in trouble because I was subletting one of my uh, villas. I rented out a villa and then I sublet the guest room. Now, in most countries you do that, it's not a big deal, even if it's not technically uh, allowed because they didn't have a visa for it. But in Bali, they take that stuff very, very seriously. And when they found out about it, I was willing to pay a fine and, and to, you know, whatever the penalty was going to be. But it turned out that uh, there was talk about jail time and there was talk about me negotiating potentially huge bribes while I'm in jail. And I didn't want that experience. So I left my cushy life, my cushy nest. I left with hours notice um, and I had to create a new life. And I thought, what do I want to do with my life? And I can make money doing a thousand different things, but I love coaching and training. So that's why I came back to it um, because I, I needed, a, I, c I couldn't live on savings for the rest of my life. I wasn't set up enough to do that. And I say, thank God that that was the case because I wasn't happy. So money can be a wonderful motivator for us to find the path that's really going to make us happy. Money is what got me off my ass and back into doing what I love. So I'm, I'm actually grateful for that. Yeah, love it, man. So when you say you weren't happy, because that, that's a lot of people's language is I want, I want to be happy, you know, right? And, and it's a, kind of a scary place if we're not careful, where, you know, because a case of beer or a bottle of wine can buy you happiness in the moment, you know, having sex or, or whatever, but then it's gone, it's gone, you know, right? Um, how, how did you define um, the things that truly brought <laughs> deeper than even happiness, like true life joy, if you will, to your life, fulfillment, if you will. How, how did you define that? And, and the reason I'm asking is for others to be able to really think about, you know, because you start reflecting back on, well, times I was ha happy in my life. Or when people say, they, oh, I just want to be happy. What does that even mean? You know, right? They, they want a significant other that, that makes them happy. Well, maybe, maybe, you know, the significant other is not going to solve that problem. It might be some type of internal work they need to do. Right. So, um, you know, with that, can you just walk us through your process and any tips that you'd have um, for others to, to make sure that that path they're going down is, is true, long lasting fulfillment, not just in the moment happiness? Yeah, I'll do that. And I'll tie it back to what we've already spoken about. I, I wouldn't say I defined it, but I realized it for myself. I realized that deep connection with other humans is 
ultimately what I want. And it, on my deathbed, it's what I'm going to want to be able to reflect on. And I think this is not just me. I suspect this is the same for most humans. Just look at the movies that we most love. Those movies have deep connection. They have some kind of vulnerability. It's not just about success. It's about success and sharing that with, with other people. So deep connection was one thing I identified. The other one was self-expression. If I'm not expressing who I am with my truth, um, with my desires, with my, my passions, if, uh, for example, I've always wanted to play guitar in, like in front of people around a campfire or at a party. I always wanted that. When I finally did it, I ended up doing it on a plane on the way to the Bahamas and playing it over the PA system for all the people on the plane. It was an incredible self-expression. And I have a bias towards self-expression. I believe that that in itself is something that brings joy. And because of that bias, I want that for other people too. And now how do you get it? It's what we've talked about. Speak more of your truth. Speak more of the truth. Take more risks. And that will lead to more self-expression and deeper connection, which are kind of two of the, the holy grails that I'm shooting for in life. Yeah. Yeah. Love it, man. Um, all right. So knowing everything you know now today through all your, your life experiences and experiences as a coach and all the internal work that you've done you know, and everything that you know right now in this moment, if you could go back and have a conversation with your younger self, like your 18 year old self or whatever point in time that would be, whether it's when you started your coaching company or maybe even that was in your childhood. Um, um, but you could go back and give yourself two pieces of advice that you feel would have totally changed the trajectory of your life and fast forwarded the, this journey that you've been on. What would those two pieces of advice look like? I would say, um, and we'll, we'll see if two come out. I have one. I would say there are going to be times when life feels so hard, you don't know if you're going to make it like even physically or you're so scared, you actually don't know if you're going to make it. And I'm here to tell you that it, it will work out. You will be okay and you will grow from it and you will get stronger. So have a little faith. Yeah. yeah it's like to this point, we've all survived the worst of days that we've been through, right? Isn't that amazing? We've survived so much. And yet still, when something new comes, the mind goes, we're not going to make it. I'm going to fail. I'm going to break up and life's going to be horrible. Like it's kind of like this background idea, like I'm not going to make it. And yet evidence is to the contrary. Einstein said there's only one fundamental question to answer. Is the universe friendly? And I think that's so genius because if the universe is not friendly, if that's what you decide, you better be careful. You're never going to get to relax you better plan and strategize all the time and watch your back. But if you decide it is friendly, it's a whole different life. You can relax a little bit, allow things to unfold, still go for what you want, but at the same time, enjoy and trust the process that life's going to work out. Yeah, man. And it's, it's so powerful. It's, it's in, you started the podcast office with, with the power of mindset, you know, right. And just, looking out of it from the right lens, you know, um, like yeah. for example, we got a flat tire the other day. We're driving up to this, this, uh, uh, amazing hike that we did. And so one, one way in or one lane, even though you got cars coming from both sides, one lane, you know, huge drop off cliff on the other side, dirt roads and come in we ended up getting a flat tire on that road. One of the big sharp rocks sliced, uh, uh, my wife's truck's tire. And, um, and in that moment, it's like, that's, you can't even fathom getting a flat tire on that road. You're holding up traffic, you know, whatever. However, on that road, if we were to get a flat tire, like we got it in the perfect spot because it's the only spot with a pull in. Yeah. Right. Most people in that moment might ha go at it of a negative moment, be pissed about a flat tire, but you know, it just allowed myself to not go there, but then count the blessings, right. Of man, how lucky are we? If there's a God who's looking out at us for a day, if we were to get a flat to get it and where we got it, this is the best possible place we could have got it, man. We are so lucky. And then it changed right. the whole perspective of, of, of everybody in the group from a yeah. negative to a positive. And yep. it, it, dude, life is, is 
because I used to be a very negative person. You know, it sounds like you went through some very uh, heavy spouts of depression and, and so did I in my, my early 20s to the point where I planned out my suicide and it got pretty ugly. And just the shift in mindset, you know, right, of like now I used to think I was the guy with the unfriendly universe, you know, right, um, where, where then with the shift of perspective I have now versus then is like, yeah, I mean, I might have moments in my business where, I, where I'm defeated. But I never lose. And what I mean by that is even in the moments where I get defeated, it's always a great learning moment and really the best learning moments, the hardest parts of our life or business or whatever, if we allow it to be, are the greatest teachers and become assets that we have in the future. So, you know, just that shift in perspective of mindset. And this is why I think it's so important to do the kind of work and work with somebody like you. Um, because we, we get so tied up in our, our, our doing just business coaching, business information, um, but I found the, the higher level success that we want or, or that we're trying to achieve the higher level of self-care, right? Um, and working on our own internal mindset and, and a right perspective shift and, and um, um, you know, shifting to a lot of this work over the last few years is the, by far the greatest coaching and work I've ever done. Uh, and with that being said, um, where is- hey, Can I just make the point, Joshua? Yeah, of course. Too? I just want, like, I know we've talked about mindset in this episode, but- um, I'm a huge believer uh, in both. I love branding. I love marketing. I love, uh, um, you know, staff relations and teamwork, but team building and all of that. I think that's important too. I just, you know, I want to speak about mindset because I think, I think we could speak about it more. And I think for each person, we're going to draw on both. What do I need today? Do I need more of this business stuff? Do I need more of my, my own growth? So I just want to say, I think both are important. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, I love that you brought that up. Yeah, because you got to be well-rounded, right? Um, yeah. 100%. And, and yeah. you know, with, with that being said, man, those that uh, uh, want to check you out, follow you on social media, um, I know that you do have a, a link to share, which we'll have in the show notes, where if somebody is interested in talking with you um, about exploring, coaching with you, that you do um, you know, have a free session there that they can do. So just, you know, what are the best places to go connect with you and, and follow you, learn more about you and do that, that uh, coaching session with you? Yeah, well, it's one spot. Um, if something resonated with you about this, I do discovery sessions for people who, who qualify. I can't say yes to everyone, but I can say yes to most people. I don't charge for these <coughs> sessions. One, because I love doing them. And two, because it's how I find the right people to work with long term. So if you're interested in, in a session to create a plan for your life and work, go to playforreal.life, L-I-F-E. It's not live, it's life. Playforreal.life and click on the big button that says request a session. Now, even if you decide you don't want to get on the phone, you just uh, want to kind of check out the process, there's a life assessment as part of that process that takes five minutes. You'll get some great information about yourself. And then you can stop at that or if you want me to help you review the results, go on and you'll get access to my calendar act to actually book a session. Yep. Love it. Awesome. And, like it. and you'll be able to join my podcast, which is launching in the next couple of weeks uh, at that same link. Awesome. So on your, tell, tell us about your, I'm curious about your podcast, man. Is it going to be um, uh, interviews with guests like this, or is it going to be where you're hitting on, on a specific topic Both. once a week? Awesome. Both. Yeah. I'm going to mix it up with occasional. I'll do a rant on something. But uh, I've already got five episodes ready. Byron Katie is going to be episode oh, two. I love her, man. Uh, yeah. And so I'm excited about that. Um, so it'll be a mixture of, of both. And it'll be called Play For Real, uh, High Performance For Life and Work. Yeah. Yeah. I have to check that out. I love her. Move, move Your DNA, man. I think I've read that book five different times, dude. Yeah. She's so brilliant. Um, love it. Love it. Love it. So um, all right, you guys that are watching and listening, uh, uh, we'll have all of, uh, well, we'll have David's link on, on to his website where you can go do that life assessment, book that uh, strategy call if you'd like. Um, plus, as I said, um, in the show notes, I'm going to have the, the exercise with the four different, the four different uh, uh, things to write out and what that process is. So you can reference that and have that right there for you as well. Um, and as always, those that are watching and listening, I know I end every podcast with this, but information without implementation is the start of delusion. Information is in power. It's taking the information that you've learned, taking action on it, that then gives you the power to go out there and create the life that you know you want and deserve. And David shared so many amazing pieces of advice with you today. Take something you learned today, take immediate action on it so you can go out there and create the life that you know you want and deserve. And David, man, this has been 
a massive honor to have you on the show. I know you're a busy man. Truly appreciate you being here. It's been a lot of fun, my friend. Thanks, Joshua. My pleasure. 100%. All right, you guys, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.